Uh, what's going on, everyone? It's Eric from Full Mount MMA, and today I'm joined by UFC heavyweight Juan the Kraken Adams. Juan, how you doing today? I'm doing great, man. Just uh, about to start that last descent before fight week, which which always sucks, but yeah, almost there. Almost there. And uh, obviously, your opponent's going to be Justin Taffa. You're fighting at UFC 247 in your hometown of Houston, so that should be awesome. Um, biggest story, uh, you move camps. You're over at Jackson and Wink now in New Mexico. What's been the biggest change uh, between tr training there and training back home in Houston? Uh, you know, the, the elevation does uh, make a big difference. That, that's one big. But for me, the, the biggest thing is, you know, just the quality of training partner is so much higher out here. Um, you know, these coaches are great. My coaches back home were great too. It's not that um, uh, that I'm. I I think that the there's that big of a jump in coaching. Um, mm -hmm. That, but one big difference here is you know I'm not having to go to multiple places. I get everything in one spot. Uh, everybody's on the same page. There's, <clears throat> you know, there's no arguments. There's no dissension. You know everybody's got one goal right uh that that's the biggest thing and also you know back home i would have to be exhausted to get a good look from any of my training partners whereas here you know if i'm not sharp i anybody here can catch me on any given day so that's uh that that's the biggest difference and it, it's definitely changed the overall intensity has gone up i would say uh before it was up to me to be like always just motivated all the time and that would get draining after a while. Whereas out here, you know, as soon as you step down there, everybody's up, you know, and uh, that 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 environment is just so much more conducive for me. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And uh, I know that's the the last time we talked. That was something that you were talking about. Is it was hard to find high level heavyweight training partners uh, back at home. Have you been working with anyone in particular at Jackson and Wink, or is it just kind of just the baseline has been lifted for you? Uh, the base line has been lifted a lot you know my main group of training partners out here has been uh you know davion franklin don tell is devin clark and uh joel bauman who are all um pretty you know high level athletes in, in different respects and then uh, also you know i'm working with christian edwards a lot and you know i've even done a few rounds with john so um it's just been crazy uh just seeing that that big difference in skill levels and that that hunger where everybody's hungry ready to succeed ready to try and to, to really try and prove themselves out there uh and that that's the difference you know there's not a lot of complacency out here. how'd the rounds with john go was that weird sparring with him for the first time uh yeah it was, it was weird in, in, a, in a different type of way because we weren't even really sparring it was like touch sparring mm -hmm. But it was one of those things where, like, he can just hit you from any angle. And it's the same with Christian, you know. So you have to be cautious because even though they're not as big as me and they're not as strong as me, they can still hit you from all these weird angles that, that normally heavyweights don't see. So I'm saying I have to be cautious for a different way just because, like, I'm not trying to get kicked in the face, you know. Yeah. Uh, it's not something I, you know, that's not on my list of things to do every morning. <laughs> But uh, so that that's different. You know, you have to be very cautious going with guys like that that are creative strikers, um, which is good because, you know, one of my biggest things is I used to just not care if I got hit or not. Uh, but uh, out here, it's it's different. Um, and that, that level of caution forces me to be more on top of everything and more observant and basically, um, you know, just, just fight a lot smarter. Has there, um, you know, moving to Jackson and Wink, has there been anything in particular that you wanted to focus on improving for this camp fighting Tafa? You know, I, I just wanted to really focus on, you know, just just game planning a little bit more, focusing more on, on the actual fighting aspect instead of just kind of going in there and uh, seeing where the fight takes me, you know. Um I really wanted to come out here with, with the goal of working with these high-level coaches, working with high-level game planners, and really, you know, having everyone on the same path, uh, same, uh, same plan, and working the exact same stuff repetitively. And that's been um, that's been huge for me. Has anything been hard? Like, it, has it been a difficult adjustment, or did you settle in pretty quickly when you were there? 
you know, um, it 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 was kind of hard at first um, adjusting to it's Albuquerque. There's not a whole lot to do mm-hmm. out here, so um, you know, uh, usually I just do a lot of stuff throughout the day to kind of help help the days pass a little for more. Here, you know, I train. I come up to my room and I either like watch a quick thing on anime before the next session, or I take a quick nap, and that's it. You know, so. Uh, you know, I've got a couple friends out here. The uh, the climate was really different. You know, Houston's super humid. Out here, it's very dry. So uh, you can kind of hear it still in, in my voice. If I don't turn my humidifier on when I go to sleep, I wake up a little congested and dry and everything. So I forgot to turn it on last night. I just passed out. And uh, it's, uh, it's it's playing with me right now a little bit. But that was, that was, that was definitely hard, you know. And you have to drink a lot more I have to drink a lot more fluid out here to, to stay hydrated. Um, otherwise, my body feels the difference. I see. Um, the the other big change that I saw, like through your Instagram and Twitter, you uh, started doing the trifecta meal system. Is was that a big change for you yeah. too? Getting like the the meal plans and everything, and how has that kind of helped you, or you know maybe made things a little bit more difficult? How's that changed? Man, you know, it physically, I can definitely tell it's helped me a lot. Mentally, it's made it a lot more difficult because, you know, I love food. You know, I love junk food. I'm a, I'm a big guy, uh, you know, coming out here and eating the same six meals since the end of October has been hard. I, you know, I, it gets, at first I was like, yay, food's here. Now I'm just like, damn, you know, I know exactly what's going to be in the box, <laughs> you know, uh, but it's helped keep the weight very consistent. You know, I've been uh, at about 280, 285 the last two or three weeks. Um, just really maintaining that. Uh, this week, we want to drop down probably to about 280 or so before we start my water cut. So that's been actually, it, it's been refreshing in one sense to have that peace of mind and, and you know, security. And you know that these people know what it's going to take to get you down to weight. But it's also like, been hard because you know there's there's days i wake up i'm like damn i want some pancakes or you know or uh, you know i want to go to waffle house and i can't you know the one time i did go to waffle house i got like horribly sick so i stopped doing cheat meals after that um no more cheat meals (laughs) that sucks you can't even trifecta made you not enjoy the waffle house as much anymore uh i want to i want to move on to uh justin taffa as an opponent um because we, we've seen very little of him in the octagon. Uh, obviously, he's got a lot of hype behind him because he trains with Mark Hunt. So there's a you know, <laughs> lineage there. But, uh, you know, seeing what you saw of him so far, I know you said you were watching some film. Uh, you know, what's your takeaway of him as an opponent? What do you think his you know, strengths, his weaknesses are? You know, his strengths, I think he, he's a very dangerous opponent. He's got knockout power in either hand, right? That's one thing. Uh, the other thing, too, is, you know, he's he's highly confident in his abilities. He will swarm you. He's got no fear coming forward. Even if you pop him, he's going to keep coming forward. That's That can be hard to deal with. Um, and, you know, I, I just – any guy that's willing to go to someone else's hometown and fight them there, it says a lot about him as a man and, and as an opponent. So you have to respect that. Um and, you know, like his brother, I believe, is a very accomplished in glory kickboxing. So, you know that they're, they're striking, their striking is going to be on point. And that's one thing. He's a southpaw also, which is new for me. But um, the, the advantages that I do have is, you know, I've got a reach advantage. I've got a height advantage. And I've got a size advantage. And I think I'm a, a lot more athletic than he is also. So, we're going to use all that, obviously. But... Again, it's heavyweight. Any punch can can change the fight. So I have to be very wary and cognizant of that, and I have to respect that. And, uh, you know, I was going to ask you what you thought your biggest advantage is. You mentioned height, reach, your athleticism. Uh, Are you going to use that, do you think, for a more wrestling-heavy game plan, or do you think you're going to try to keep it mostly on the feet for this one or just kind of see how it goes? You know, I, I kind of have to see how it goes with him. If he's going to initiate clunches and, and things like that, then, yeah, I, I, obviously I have to wrestle him right there. Um, if he wants to, you know, kind of stay back and, and look for that haymaker, then, I'm, you know, I'm not going to rush in there because that just gives him an opening <laughs> to land that shot. But, 
So I have to see what he does and, and how he responds to things. Um, you know, take him to deep water, obviously. I think I have better conditioning than him. Um, you know, I do. So even though he weighs in at the, at the same as me, I think that our weight is distributed very differently. And um, I'm a lot, you know, I've got five more inches of frame to disperse that weight across. So it uh, it's different. Um, but, uh, like I said, it's heavyweight. Anything, anything can happen. Especially with this guy, you know, I think all of his wins have been by knockout. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, obviously, you're from Houston. We talked about that. This fight is in Houston, so that's kind of big. Is there any pressure fighting in front of, any added pressure fighting in front of your hometown? Or are you kind of just treating this as a regular fight? You know, the crowd doesn't really affect me when I fight. You know, it's when I walk out, I'm like, oh, that's a lot of people, but... Once it starts, it's I'm not thinking about that at all. You know, once I get hit in the face, it, it, I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I don't uh, – the, the crowd rarely affects me all that. Uh, it's the last thing I'm thinking about. If you think about it too much beforehand, it does – it can add that, that pressure. Um, what I've done differently this fight as opposed to other ones, um, other fights I tried to control as many variables that I could – to better impact the variables that I couldn't control. Whereas this fight, I I broke it down and I'm like, there's, there's only two things that I know for sure are going to happen, right? The weigh in and the fight. So I have to make sure everything's on point for the weigh in. And then the fight, all I can do is show up and execute. So that's what I have to focus on. Those two things, you know, making weight and executing. That's it. Uh, That's the only two things I have control over. And if I start thinking about or trying to, you know, simulate too much stuff outside of that it takes focus away from those two things and then it decreases the probability of those two things that i know are going to happen it decreases my probability of success when i focus on too much outside of that yeah i I get you that makes sense um finally last question uh you're you're fighting on the main card uh your new teammate john jones is going to be headlining it against dominic reyes how do you think as someone who's you know faced off with him a few times now how do you think he stacks up against Dominic Reyes? How do you think that fight goes? You know, Dom is actually managed by the same guy as me. So oh, yeah. There's that, as- there's that aspect of it. But it it's so weird because watching John train and seeing how hard he actually works, it, it, it changes, you know, a lot of your perceptions of him. And just he puts things together in a way that, most people wouldn't even think to. Well, most people wouldn't even think to chain stuff together with. And uh, Dom is an athlete, though, and Dom is extremely confident. He's got, you know, that finishing ability that I haven't seen much in John's other opponents. And most of John's other opponents, when they fight him, they stop. They they lose that hunter mentality. They become the hunted. And I think if John can neutralize Dom's uh, attacks, which John is very good at doing, um, it's going to be a very long night for Dom. But if Dom sticks to his game plan, I think John's in for one of the tougher fights of his career. Ultimately, I do think John is still going to win that fight. I don't think it's going to be an extremely dominant performance. I think it's going to be great for the fans to see a truly competitive fight, but I still think John's gonna gonna take the win. Uh, I don't think either fight, fighter is gonna lose stock from this. Though. Oh, there you go. You got the predictions right from the Kraken himself. Uh, that yeah. those are all the questions I got this afternoon. Um, if you guys like this content, subscribe to Full Man MMA. Follow Juan on Instagram and Twitter. He's got some of the funniest social media accounts of any fighter that I've seen. Your your Instagram <laughs> stories, I love watching every day. I gotta say, big fan of those. Awesome. But, um, awesome. but yeah, is there anything else you want to say before we sign off? No, nah, man. Uh, thanks for thanks for having me back on, and um, I'm always super appreciative to the fans. Obviously, you know, I I was saying this today. You know, there's without fans, there's no audience for the sport, and without a sport and without a demand for it, there are no athletes. So because of the fans, I'm allowed to do what I'm what I do, and uh, I couldn't do this without you guys. Well, thank you so much for joining me after this afternoon, Juan. Uh, Hopefully I'll see you again soon. For sure, man. Have a good one. Thank you. You too.